on this episode my very first radio the ASU FT23R and when I say my very first radio the very first ham radio in effect that I had I got this radio way back in 1990 when I was mere but a lad and um, really thought I'd actually lost this thing and just found it in a drawer there's me back in 1990 with my uh, Amiga 600 and the tiny 22 packet system there connected up to the FT23 there you can see the FT23 right next to my setup that was my very early setup there back in 1990 all those years ago so I actually thought I'd lost this radio I thought um, I had no idea it was still in one of the drawers I just recently uh, fixed there and so I was really pleased to find this. This was, like I say, my very first proper ham radio that I bought. And um, really nice little unit this for the time. I still think it is a, a nice compact unit really. Although it's only a, a single band two meter radio, I think they packed a lot in this for the time. Um, a single on off volume switch, channel dial selection, and a, a separate squelch knob, which I've always preferred. And look, I never even took the protective plastic off the uh, metal tab there. Um, it had a, a single PTT and then a 1750 tone burst key there. That's what it was set at here in the UK anyway. Um, a slide off battery. This was a 7.2 volt nickel metal high drive battery cell. And uh, as you'll see, there were adapters and other options available for this radio at the time. Slightly unusual that it had a BNC antenna socket. Um, quite a lot of the radios for the time actually did have that but you don't see that so much these days and uh, it had the separate ear and mic socket but you notice a proper two and a half mil for the ear and a and a, and a one and a half or the smaller size three and a half for the ear and two and a half for the mic and which I've always thought was the best way around of doing that um, anyway this uh, like I say this radio is roughly nearly 30 years old now and it's starting to suffer a little bit on the LCD there with the creep uh, I've seen this on other uh, screens there where eventually the actual black side of the LCD uh, creeps through and it'll eventually go completely black now the existing battery packs already had the cells changed in it once I know because I did it myself and I put some aftermarket batteries in there and this pack uh, from new didn't seem to be taking a charge so I opened it up it's very easy to pry this open and um, lo and behold I found the actual batteries there had corroded quite badly the rechargeable so I went on to eBay I had a look at buying the cells separately but it didn't make any sense I managed to find a nickel metal hydride pack that will go in there with a charger for eight pounds which was a lot cheaper than the 30 pounds for the new pack now the other thing that I found in the drawer was the uh, DC to DC converter or charger adapter here this was a nice little unit it sat in between the battery and the main body of the radio and enabled you to run the um, run the radio off of an external supply of up to 16 volts but also at the same time what it did was it would charge the battery beneath it as well so it was quite a useful little accessory this and something that I use quite a lot it came with a little slide on adapter plate so if you weren't using it with the battery connected you could pop that on the bottom of the adapter and it would keep the adapter all nice and secure and dust free and it had a, a DC uh, socket adapter there slightly unusual in that it had the outer of being positive and the inner being negative you don't see that very much these days so anyway I've uh, slid the battery on the bottom of this just to show you the sort of length it can get to it's quite a quite a beast actually there I remember going on holiday in Cyprus in the early 90s and noticed the security guards around the hotel were actually using these radios so they were widely used and obviously widely available across Europe and the rest of the world during that period in time there you can see it next to a, a UV 5R plus and what I thought I'd just do here is just check the um, the voltage coming from the supply was okay it was roughly at, at just over 12 volts there plugged in the adapter now it shows us here that the maximum output is 5 watts um, when you've got a 12 volt supply connected um, so I thought I'd be worth testing to see if this radio was still holding up after all these years so I tuned, tuned it down and connected it up to the dummy load and keyed up and uh, here were the results on low power we were getting 0.62 watts which seemed about reasonable straight into the into the dummy load there and then setting it up on high power we picked up 3.98 watts so I think that's that's fairly there or thereabouts that's par for the course it may have dropped a little bit in power over the years possibly not so sure but um, we'll certainly test it out in the field to see how it went now there are options that you could get with the radio one of which was a, a DTMF uh, pet keypad there and there was also a 70 sems and a 200 meg version as well that came out um, I've only got the two meter version and there was also a tone board there this radio doesn't have a tone option so out of sight we go 
go to the usual locations and uh, we'll give this radio a test up next to the uh, the UV5R Plus uh, just for reference. There's the view of Banbury, my hometown and where my, we're just the other side of that big factory there. That's where, where we are for the first test. So we'll pull up, we'll get the radios out and we'll have a good test. Right, we're going to use the, uh, the UV5R Plus as a reference, everyone knows this one. So we're on two meters here, we're at location uh, location A, three miles. This is G7LNK with the UV5R Plus at location A, three miles. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7LNK with the UV5R Plus at location A, three miles. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I'm having to plug in the FT23R, plug it into the car cigarette lighter adapter. We're on full power here. We will say, see what difference putting it to low power makes actually. Anyway, here we go. This is G7LNK with the Yaesu FT23R at location A, approximately three miles. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. This is G7LNK with the Yaesu FT23R at location A, approximately three miles. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Let's just drop it down to low power. Stick it on low power, see what difference that makes. This is G7LNK with the Yaesu FT23R. FT23R testing in location A, 12345-54321 on low power. We'll go up to location B now and uh, we'll do another test there. Right, we're at location B with the Acer FT23R. There it is on the floor. Should pick that up. And um, so we'll get out and we'll try it here. I'm pretty sure it's going to make it in okay, but it was just interesting to see how this old radio will fare compared to a more modern radio anyway. Right, we're with the UV5R Plus at location B. This is G7 LNK with the UV5R Plus at location B testing. Uh, on VHF on high power one two three four five five four three two one the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. LNK with the UV five R plus at location B uh, on VHF on high power one two three four five four three two one the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, we got the FT twenty three R. This is G7LNK at location B with the FT23R testing. 12345 the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a VHF high power test, high power test, approximately 4 watts. This is G7LNK with the FT23R testing. 54321, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a VHF high power test, high power test. Approximately four watts. Seven LNK, G seven LNK testing one two three four five five four three two one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Testing one two three one two three four five five four three two one. Reception back at base on VHF around me isn't very good. I mean, there's a there's a beacon or some signal locally that swamps uh, uh, two meters near me. You can see it here up on the SDR. When I set the SDR up to its maximum sensitivity, it re really does affect it. So, unfortunately, the VHF testing hasn't been that great. Uh, it probably would perform better now. The other thing I was going to mention was that SDR Play have released the SDR Uno software with a scanner upgrade. And now SDR Play kindly sent me a, a unit for review at Christmas time, and I've been using using it in place of the cheaper STI unit, I've been finding it very, very good. And they've alerted me the fact that the new software here is available for download from the website. And what this does, or various other bug fixes, is it brings the scanning feature to the uh, SDR unit, to the software, to SDR Uno. You know. If you go to page 29 of the new manual, which is available on the website, you'll find all you need to know about the new feature. I could go through it on, on the software, but there really isn't a lot of point. It's much better if you have a read through the manual and you'll see what's available in this new up, up, update. i would made my own little macro scripts for doing basic scanning on the unit, but uh, this is far more functional 
channel and built into the program and it's highly recommended it's a really nice little addition to the program and the one thing that it had missing a little quick demonstration here just showing it scanning through the PMR channels locally it scans very very fast as you can see so anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed this I certainly have and I was really pleased that I hadn't lost this old radio of mine uh, it's been a really good radio over the years and something that uh, I should pop the new batteries in and keep it going and and pop it back in the in, and use it you know regularly because I honestly thought I'd actually lost this so I'm really really pleased that I haven't I actually thought someone had stolen it if I'm being honest <laughs> somebody that came in the house that's terrible isn't it but you never know these days do you anyway I think we're going to sit this back where it belongs now back in the shelf with all the other guys so now it's getting there you see I've had to print some uh, some brackets to stop them falling out <laughs> anyway if you have been and I hope you've enjoyed this thanks ever so much for watching and um, keep an eye on the channel for some more content from me hope you've enjoyed it we'll see you soon